Okay, thank you, Tim. My lord down. Okay, let's 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 start. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're tuning in from, ladies and gentlemen, Tong and Pro athletes of the days and yesterday. Welcome to our weekly conversation with our Tong and Pro athletes. Uh, we are honored every week to bring to you one of our athletes, um, just to have a conversation, get to know them, and um, and see what it takes to become a pro athlete. Their commitment, their sacrifice, um, their mental toughness, their uh, preparation, hard work, and determination in hopes that we learn from these athletes. Uh, but before we start, let me um, ask everyone, if you like what we are doing, to please share our page, our conversation. Uh, also, you can go to YouTube and uh, type in uh, Tongan Pro Athletes, and you can find all of our conversation there. So um, our guest tonight is Tao Pupua. He is a world-renowned opera singer whose unconventional path to prestige singing career includes a detour, courtesy of the NFL. He grew up in Utah after his family moved to Salt Lake City from Tonga when he was only five years old. After high school, he got a scholarship from Weber State University to further his education in music and also played football. His musical education was put on hold because Tao was drafted to the NFL by the Cleveland Browns. Yay, Cleveland Browns. Uh, he played with, the Cleveland, with Cleveland and Baltimore Ravens and unexpectedly injured injury uh, he got injured early in his career, uh, changing his life course, allowing him to follow his other passion, which is the opera. Uh, Tao moved to New York City in pursuing his singing career, where he met his mentor, Kiri T. Kanawa. Did I say that right, Tao? T. Kanawa, yeah. T. Kanawa, okay. Uh, he helped Tao to get an audition with the prestige Julian, uh, Julian School of Music. And guess what? My man got a scholarship. <laughs> uh, and uh, Tao, uh, Tao graduated high with high honors. He was the best of the best in my book. After graduating, he traveled across America and all over the world, sharing his talent with the world. He now lives in New York, where he continued to bless people with his voice. He is crushing this opera singing, man. I'm telling you, he can sing. So two weeks ago, uh, Tao was the uh, keynote speaker at his alma mater, Weber State University. Tao, we are honored to have you as our uh, to uh, have you tonight. Uh, thank you for um, accepting our invitation. Um, I want to just ask you to come on in, introduce yourself, um, introduce your parents, and um, let us know what uh, uh, town you're from in Tonga. I'm sure everybody wants to find out. And uh, after that, we'll, we'll continue, you know. So welcome, my friend. Um, I just want to let everybody know that when Tao came to Cleveland, I was still there. Tao and I hung out together. So it's it's good to see you, Tao. It's good to see you, my friend. Tim, thank you so much for having me. It's it's a pleasure to be here and it's a pleasure to see you again. <laughs> uh, I think I believe the last time I saw you was in 1997 when we wow. were in Cleveland before before the team moved to Baltimore, became the Baltimore, Baltimore Ravens. Yes. But um I like to say that my um you said to mention my parents. My dad's name is Sioneve Pupua from the village of Atu. And then my mom is, uh, her name is Manusiufanga um, Kinikini. 
uh, and where she's from, uh, her mother is from Fahefa and her father is from Uija. So, okay. so yeah, so that's, that's what I have. And then okay. uh, we moved to America. Yeah. And so, so, you, so you moved out here, you moved out to, uh, so you came straight from Tonga to, to, to uh, Salt Lake City when you moved from Tonga? Uh, no, actually we, we moved from um, Tonga to Hawaii. And okay. we lived in Hawaii for about a year and uh, where my dad worked and everything. But, you know, I like to accent on the things like how I grew up because it, sure. it was a, sure. it was really, really, you know, moving from Tonga to America and you have no connections. Sure. Um, you grow up very, very humble. And yeah. so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a humbling experience just to, the only time you would see your father was on a Sunday to go to church. <laughs> You know, yeah. he works odd jobs Monday through Saturdays to make sure, sure that, you know, food is on the table. Favorite. But, you yeah. know, one of those things that, you know, when you grow up like that, you you learn so much and you're humbled by it that when you finally make it to the mainland, you know, sure. Utah yeah. and everything. So when an opportunity comes your way, you know, um, you sort of snatch it up because you don't sure. want to repeat you don't want to do a, right. a cycle of your life uh how you grew up you want better things in life yeah. and so yeah so we That's moved awesome. to uh, utah and, and i started going to school and doing a lot of things so what were you um like i said were you um when you started playing football um did you notice that you were pretty good at, at playing football or you just it, it was that a gradual thing that you went through how, and how old were you when you started playing football? Because, you know, I started playing football maybe at 10, 11. Yeah, so. yeah. So so my cousin and I were, we were uh, playing on our uh, like playground of our elementary school. And it was really strange because there was a Palangi guy that, you know, lurked around, walked around and look, he was looking for big kids. Right. And of course, <laughs> the Polynesian kids, they tend to grow fast, right. you know. And so when he saw us, we were nine years old, maybe 10 and everything. And he walked over to us and he said, hey, do you guys play football? Of course, we didn't know what football was. We knew what right. rugby was, but right. we didn't know what football was. And so football was a new thing, shall sure. we say, for, sure. for the Tongan people. And so for, for us, we, we just looked at him and he said, you know, you guys are fast. So he saw us playing on our playground, uh, on the playground. So he asked if he could uh, meet our parents. So we took him home and he spoke, I mean, my parents didn't speak English, sure. but luckily oh, yeah. my cousin's mom spoke <laughs> some English. And so yeah. they communicated and he said, I would like to take these two boys to play little league football in the neighborhood. And so that's what happened. That's how it all started. Oh, wow. Wow. So that's, I mean, I, I think most of the time that's that's the, the story with a lot of us that migrated from Tonga uh, out here to the uh, to the United States, you know, because uh, our parents left the country and in, in, in looking for a, a better life for all of us uh, coming out here because you're first generation uh, American uh, growing up here in America, but you were born in Tonga. And um, it's always it's always good, and it's always nice to hear when, when, when you know somebody like you makes it into the NFL, and 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 also after uh, playing football, uh, have a, have a career after football because um, most of the time, all we see is football, and we don't fall back. A lot of times, you know, you got to have a fallback plan but um when you got a scholarship to go to weber state um were you did you already know that you uh, so did you already were you already know that you were a good singer back then i mean you were a good football player but you, well, were you yeah also I, I, a mean, good I, was, I was a good football player what happened was you know growing up wesleyana methodist yeah <laughs> um, my parents would always go to church and we would all, and so us kids would always follow along, you know, I'm the youngest of nine. And so wow. I would always follow my parents and during their choir practice, Hakohiva, mm -hmm. um, I would just be hanging around and I would hear a lot of the Tongan singing. 
And sure. I got to the point that I really enjoyed it. And I just hung out, but I didn't really know that I had a voice. Um, I think what it was is that, and this is, I, I feel this is very important for those people who have kids and everything to let your kids um, shine. Do not, because in our culture, I find in our culture that we like to shh, sit down, yeah. hold stop, back. You know, hold back. be quiet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, hold back and stuff. But I, I believe that our, our, our people are very, very talented people in, uh, in whatever we put our minds to. And so my parents never told me to be quiet. You know, when I would try to sing along with the choir, you know, you hear this young boy going, <laughs> and my parents never yeah. told me to be quiet. So I sort of just, you know, developed that. Uh, oh, wow the love of singing, but I see a lot of, uh, of people, of our people, you know, mm -hmm. shushing kids to be quiet yeah. and stuff, rather than um, uh, um, motivate them to yeah. become whatever they want to become. And right. so you, you touched on the point of, of the singing and the football. Yes, I was very, very lucky and very blessed yeah. to have singing to fall back on. And I was very, um, fortunate that when I, you know, when football was over, I was able to uh, say to myself, what am I going to do now? Because I believe, Tim, I believe that everybody has a purpose. I believe that right. everybody has a purpose of life. And right. so, you know, it, it is up to us to find our purpose. Right. Well, you know, the, 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 so the singing, it was just from you being singing at the choir at the Methodist Church, and that's how that's how we develop all the voice that you have now. And uh, you know, it's, it's when when you when you got a scholarship to go to Weaver State. Uh, I know we all you know we talk about when somebody get a scholarship. I know it's for you know it's education first before football. So I'm, I'm taking that you already thought to yourself, man, this is a good way for me to go further my singing career and, and also play football at the same time. Well, I, I didn't really know that I was going to sing. I okay. All I knew was that I enjoy singing. Enjoy singing. I didn't okay. know that I was going to make a career out of it. All I knew was that um, I had this opportunity to go to college because of football, and that yeah. was my vehicle into college. Because if I didn't have yeah. football, I think I would not have gone. I would not have gone to college. I think I would have just been at home. I don't know what my life would have been. Yeah. Maybe iate or something. <laughs> you know. Oh, no, so you know. But the, 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 that's the whole thing about a lot of time is that that was the opportunity for you. Exactly. To to, to get where you uh, you know to get that singing career going because a lot of us. Our parents could not afford to put us in, in the university then any, anyway, yeah. you know, and yeah. um, I think that was like I said, there was like a vehicle for you to, to uh, you know, to move on, to, to play football and also, you know, further your singing career. Right, right. And so when, when I was playing football at Weber, um, uh, I was in the music department one night and I was practicing by myself. And then I heard a, a knock on the door and I opened it up. It was this old lady and she was a voice teacher at oh, Weber wow. State. And she wow. looked at me and she goes, oh, do you go to, you know, like, do you, do you go to school here? Meaning, um, are you a music person? I said, no. Sure. I said, I'm a football player. And she goes, a football player? <laughs> <laughs> and so she was shocked. Yeah. And so she asked me, she says, well, you have a really good voice and I would like to teach you. So she taught me for about two months. And um, then she said, um, why don't you try to get a scholarship, you know, to pay for your private voice lessons? Because football, wow. paid, football paid for all your schooling, but it didn't pay for private lessons, you right. know, right. and and so I, uh, one day I walked into the dean's office in the music department and I said, um, hey, I, I was wondering if I could get a scholarship. You know, when you're a student, you're poor, you don't have money. Sure. And I yeah. said to the dean, I said, is there any way I could get a, a, a scholarship, you know, to pay for my private voice lessons? And he said, well, can you sing? And I want to hear you sing. So I sang for him right then. And um, after, oh, I, wow. I, after I finished singing for him, 
um, it, he said, well, why do you like to sing? So he asked me like two questions. Why do you like to sing? And I said, I don't know. I, I, I feel free. I feel great. Sure. You know, and then, you know, I feel electricity. And then he asked me another question. <clears throat> and after I was done with that second question, he said, okay, you can have a scholarship, uh, a singing scholarship. Oh, wow. He gave me a singing scholarship right nice. there. So nice. that was awesome. Yeah. You know, we, um, we always talk about, um, you know, uh, having a career after your playing, mm -hmm. your playing days are over. You know, and a lot, a lot don't see the after, after playing football, because a lot of us, so as myself too, uh, didn't think that football was going to be, was going to, you know, be over with someday. And uh, it's just, just like, you know, an example was you that your, your football career was cut, cut short because you got hurt. Yeah, and, and um, that's the thing about a lot of, of 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 kids that don't see is that you know football is only a small part of your life. Correct. That, you know, because um, you're done with football. I mean, I was done with football. I wasn't even thirty yet. Yeah. You know. Um, well, I think I think I I I are um, one of our. Uh, problems might not be a problem, but what I see is like when I finished football, it was really hard because of our people, right? And right. so like when I, you know, I'm telling the story, so whoever is listening could, you know, figure things out and listen right. to that football is not everything and not to, not to listen to the outside noise because there's a lot of people who will be talking smack or yeah. you know, a lot of outside noise. And so what I remember is that when football finished and I was driving back from Baltimore to um, Salt Lake, yeah. and I just remember our people there, you know, some Tommy people, they, how they talk, they would sit there and go, oh, why did he come back? You know, rather than <laughs> saying he got, he got injured, they yeah. started going on a whole different, yeah. um, you know, story. Yeah. And so, for, and so for me it was like I had to um, put on some horse blinders, you know, to sure. you know, sure. so I don't see any anything yeah. outside. And I put on like some like headphones because I don't want to hear any outside noise, and I don't want to see any uh, anybody try to pull me Negative. down. Just negative, negative, negative and so, comments and stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. So for, I think for my whole entire life, I just been, you know, I, I, I've been blessed that I had this opportunity to put on these blinds and notice and know that there are people out there who are negative, that there are people out there who are not for you. Yeah. So for me, I had to find the people that were, for me that believed in me or also have the same goals as myself. I was gonna so say, I, would, I was gonna say there's there's people, good people out there too. Plenty. Yeah. And there's yeah. more good people than bad people. Yeah. But yeah. it seems like the bad people seems to get through those cracks and get to you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no. Yes, I mean just, the, <laughs> the one the negative outweighs the positive and most of the times, you yeah. know, when you know and, and you Sometimes you dwell on it too much, too, on the negative instead yes. of dwelling, yeah. instead of thinking, man, I'm better than this. Why am I dwelling on negative stuff? But it, it's hard. Sometimes it's just hard not to, to think about it. <laughs> it, it. It is hard because especially when somebody says something that is really close to home, you know, yeah. with your talent and everything, you seem to dwell on it. But I, I, I think I'm at that part of my life at that age that when somebody says anything you know like the saying it's duck to water the yeah. water will just roll yeah. off the duck yeah exactly. so for me that's what i do okay let's 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 jump into uh, uh when you when when you came home after injury um when did you decide to pursue this singing career uh i think it was like maybe two years after I came, uh, left, um, only because I spoke to, uh, Bill Belichick, you know, who was sure. at Cleveland Browns Cleveland Brown, and yeah. we, we were talking and he said, you know, 
you know, Bill, like for me, when Bill drafts you, he, you know, he's going to, you're he's one of his. Help you out. Boys. He's going to help yeah. you out with no matter what. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. And so what happened was Bill called and we, Bill Belichick called and we talked and he said, what has, what have they done to you now? Uh, Baltimore. Sure. And I say, well, I, I got injured and, um, you know, I had the opportunity of staying and, and having them heal me for, sure. you know, for however, how long, of course. but, um, yeah. you know, it's really important to have a good agent. And sure. so the agent I had then was, it was one of those things like, oh, you know, my cousin, oh, my <laughs> wife's father is an agent, is a lawyer, so he could help you out rather than sure. me going with a real sports agent, right? Uh, I so I said, all right. But so when an agent, when this type of agent looks at money more than right. you know, a person's right. future, you, they sort of go with the money. So that's what happened. With, with that. So I, Bill said to me, he said, I, I told him, I said, I'm going to go back to Salt Lake and uh, I'm going to, you know, do my rehab in Utah. And he says, okay, do your rehab in, in Utah and let's talk, you know, once wow, you feel better. That's, that's but it great. took about, it took about a year for me to heal. And so after a year, um, uh, I, I got better and then I was sent out to um, to Canada to play for the Canadian League for one right. year okay. so I could get, you know, my, you know, practice back and, sure. and you know, sure. football skills back. Right. And so I went to Canadian League, but the first day I got injured again, I pulled oh, my wow. hamstring and I never, I, you know, I never got injured. I never pulled my hamstring or anything, but I pulled my hamstring and it just got worse. And so that's the day I, you know, I was sitting in my room and I just looked up to the sky and I said, what is my, what is my calling? What is sure. my life's purpose? Sure. Sure. And so this voice, you know, came into my head and said, you know, just step left and move forward and um, pursue singing. And so that's what I did. Wow. So, um, so you moved to New York. So you yeah. decided to move to New York to, this is the next chapter of your life. You're going to go and, 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 and pursue the singing career, um, which, which landed you in, a, in the prestige, um, I mean, school. Uh, yeah, Julia, really are. yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. hey, nobody just, nobody just get into that school just to get in. I mean, you got to be good. You got to be good to get into this school. Tim, so, I am. I am so honored when I got into that school and I graduated in 2011, yes. the lady, there's an old lady there a bit. She was like 95 years old. She looked at me and she goes, you're Polynesian. And I said, yes. And she says, you're the first Polynesian to graduate from Juilliard. Yeah. And I sat there and I said, you gotta be kidding me. She goes, she goes, no, I've worked here forever. And she, and, uh, she said, there's other Polynesian. They claim to be Polynesian, but they're, you know, they're the Siapanis from Hawaii. Okay, Hawaii so, okay. but, but to have you like a, a, a full blood oh, Polynesian. Sure. Yeah, she goes, you're the first to graduate from Juilliard. I was like, wow, I am honored. That's you awesome, know? yeah. And so it was pretty cool. Wait, but you know, hey, I might be the first Polynesian, but you're like one of those pioneers in the NFL, <laughs> you know? You're like one of those first Tongans out there that we well, younger yeah. Tongans looked at Right. You know, you were playing right. football. Yeah. And so it was wonderful to, I mean, for me, it was wonderful to meet you for the first time in Cleveland, you know, to meet, you know, yeah. another Polynesian people that's out there, you know, being a pioneer. You know, it's, it's always nice, you know, um, when I heard that you came to Cleveland and uh, I said to myself, well, I, you know, I got to go find this guy uh, to meet up with you. And it's, you know, it was, it was a pleasure you know, and a lot of people don't know that we hung out together in Cleveland while you were there. We used oh, to go yeah. out and stuff like that. But uh, so it's good to see you again. And um, let's go back to your singing career, man, because, you know, um, as, as I follow you, follow you, I follow you, man. You don't know I follow you and, and try to figure out where you're at in, in your singing career. You sing all over the the country here in the United States and you've been singing all over the world. You know, you travel all over the world. And what people don't understand is, is that 
I mean, you are one of one of uh, the best singers out there. You do sing a solo, and then you do theater and all that stuff. So, it's, tell tell me how does it feel to be up there standing and singing in front of these people? Well, Tim. Um... I believe that everything has a stepping stone, right? Sure. So football had literally prepared me, literally prepared me for the singing thing that I'm doing now. To be competitive, to be on time, to be... So, so there's also com com uh, competition in this singing stuff. Oh, too. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think it <laughs> might be a little bit more brutal than football. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really, huh? <laughs> That's wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. There's a lot of backstabbing on this one. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot that has to deal with, you know, with singing, but, you know, I've sung around, I've sung in, in, in Italy and England and Denmark and sure. you know, Germany and all that, those places. Yeah. Um, but to get up there and, and sing, it reminds me of uh, getting, you know, going out there and play football. I mean, there's, sure. you have to deliver. You have yeah. to uh, do your homework. You have to take care of you. You have yeah. to make sure that um, that you are well rested, and you have to make sure that you know your language. If you're singing in French, German, Russian, or Italian, yeah. you have That's to make sure that you know all that. And so, you know, to be a singer is also being an athlete. You know, the way right. one, the way you breathe, the way you move. Uh, there's a lot that has to deal with it. And the way, little, there's a lot of little technique you got to have, right? Yeah, and the, and the way to project, to sing really sure. uh, loud that you, because we're not, we don't have microphones, so we just sing. And we have to make sure that our voice, if it's in a 4,000 seat theater, you have to make sure that your voice, the person way up there in the balcony could hear you over the whole orchestra. And so it's, wow. it's a lot. It's a... Yeah. So there's there's every, everything that comes with its own technique and its own um, things that you need to do, but but it works together. I mean, it's kind of similar to like you're saying, it's similar to football and similar to your singing because there's different technique, but it's almost like the same you yeah. know same outlook on it. Yeah, it's, it's like track. It's like track. You got to keep your breathing, you know, settled. You got to, you can't mm -hmm. be breathing uh, like, uh, you know, sure. high and everything. You have to control your breathing and everything. And just you're controlling your breathing about your mindset. Yeah. Your mind has to be focused and your mind has to be in that game, in that play, in that opera, on that stage, in that character. And you yeah. have to deliver. So like I, I I want to remind our our audience, you know how how big you are. I mean you're you're a big guy too. You know you're about six four. You know I'm six and five. Yeah. Six, six five. In in your playing days, you were what about two ninety. Two ninety. Yeah, so I was a piece of man, Yeah. So as 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 a big guy like you, you stand out when you when you're up there on stage. You yeah. Know, and and it's. So when I, you know, I see it, I've seen a few pictures and seen a few of your uh, videos, you do stand out because you're a big guy. And, and with that voice coming out of you, I mean, it's very strong coming out of you, you know, out of your voice. So um, when you travel around the world, um, do you meet any, any of the Polynesian people or do you hear any, any of them when you travel? Uh, no, I, I, you know, it would be nice, sure. but I, I don't meet uh, any, there's not a lot of Polynesian people in our field yeah, of yeah. music, um, but, you know, people that live in these countries, I, I have not come across any of them. Okay. Yeah, but it would, would be nice. Yeah, what would you suggest? I mean, I know maybe, you know, people, uh, kids probably are uh, listening to you. What would you uh, tell some of these kids that really, you know, to look at this career that you're, you're on? Because I know you just said it, that you're the only one that is, is in this career. And 
maybe there's kids listening that want to get into it. What would what would what would you tell them? I would say to first start to believe in themselves, believe in themselves and believe in the talent that they have been blessed with. Um, also to forgive themselves because in our time, in their time, there's going to be some failures and some, you know, things that some they can't do. Yeah. yeah, but they had to forgive themselves, but also to love themselves because in this crazy world that we live in now, there's a lot of hatred and a lot of sure. um, backstabbing. There's a lot of put down, but to love themselves and, you know, and to keep faith and, and have the courage to move forward yeah. but also to surround themselves with people that have that same kind of mindset, not surround themselves with people that, you know, who, who live in the maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe, or I, I don't know, but live in, you know, hanging out with the people of like, well, let me give it a try. You know, sure. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it, you know, surround themselves with winners and people that yeah. believe like that and talk like that, because I believe that, you know, if you manifest it, if you say it out loud, the universe or God, here's, you, here's what you want and sure. we'll give it to you, you know, rather than keeping quiet and saying, well, I'm just a poor old me and I don't know if I <laughs> yeah. could do it, but you have to, you know, have to, you know, stand straight, sit up straight and just declare what you want with faith and courage. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I, yeah I, I think like you just said, is that you got to believe in yourself. Most of the time, what you have to believe in yourself that you can do it and you can do it and then go out and find the people that has done it before. To, yes. You know, and, 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 and follow what they have done. Uh, no matter what. I mean, I think the whole idea is that you, ha you have to believe in yourself. You have to have confidence in yourself to be able to conquer anything that you, that you put your mind to it. So would, um, as a um, well-known tenor, right? You're, that's, that's, that's tenor, you, yeah. a tenor. Okay. Um, would there be some time that you uh, maybe uh, have a, a, a school or a camp to help some of these kids or? You know, thank you for asking that. I would yeah. love to, like, you know, maybe one day for me, maybe one day I can make my way to Tonga and, um, and maybe. Because you, know, get... you know, all our Tongan kids in Tonga, they sing in school, you know, most of the school, they all I sing. Know. And I've seen so. some videos and they are, they are wonderful and they're excellent yeah. and everything. And for me, I would love to go to Tonga and give a master class, you know, there you go. There you or, go. or or teach a, like they could do like scenes from an opera sure. where they could learn, you know, the character and yeah. also they could learn the language of Italian because most of the operas I sing in is in Italian. And so to go there for like maybe three months and just do something and do yeah. opera scenes. It would be fantastic, but also educate the Tongan people because what I noticed is that when we have our Tongan function, when somebody sings, if someone's up there singing, a little kid will be running around and you know, people will be talking <laughs> in the back. You know, people are talking in the back and stuff. But to also like just say to them, you know, this is really important. And for, you know, if you guys could just, you know, just give however Why many many minutes you know your yeah. focus to this person on stage because they've worked really really hard sure. to um to share this talent with you but just to have that that would be great you know yeah. well i i brought it up just you know put a little bug in your ear that you know maybe someday that when you feel like uh you can go back and give back to the to the kids in tonga you know you let us know we can probably can put something together uh, so, um, what else, what else do you, what else is, is happening in your life though? I mean, it's, uh, uh, with, well, with this COVID, you know, when COVID hit, um, I was in Australia to, uh, make my operatic, uh, debut with Australia. 
uh, and then COVID hit, and then I came back to America. But okay. you know, the world has been shut down. There has sure. been no opera sure. around. So what I had been doing with my time is, I've been studying. I've been looking at some operatic roles, but also I have traveled a lot. I have got sure. on a plane and just. <laughs> I would fly into a state and I would rent a car for a month and I would go and see all these national parks and I would oh, go wow. and okay. see all these like you know drive you know just drive through you know the country land of America and just seeing the beauty of America right. and I feel that you know in order for us to uh, be in touch with our with nature and with our sure. spiritual side is that sometimes we have to leave um, a lot of the noise and a lot of the baggage behind and just jump in a car sure. and drive up to the mountains and and see the beauty yeah. of America. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like a lot of our people don't get that opportunity. And it would be nice if they do. Yeah. Well, you know, um, it, it's it's uh, like you said, you know, a lot most of them are trying to put food on the table. And, you know, and, and that's probably the big thing that it's not happening because a lot of them are out there trying to figure out how to put food on the table, especially after this pandemic is, has happened. Right. Yeah, and yeah. Um, what, um, have you thought about um, making a record? Do you have a record out there that people can buy and they can hear you sing uh, stuff like that? No, no, I, I don't have any recordings. The only recordings that are out is uh, on YouTube. On uh, YouTube, okay. Yeah, what, what makes it hard to do a recording is that um, a lot of the orchestra is union. So you have to, like, if I go and sing at an opera house somewhere, I can't uh -huh. just take that music and use it for my satisfaction. Oh, okay. It's because it's union. And so I, I can get in trouble for that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, maybe you can do a Tongan one. <laughs> you know what? I am I'm starting to look at some Tongan songs. Yeah. A lot of you know, I would like to sing a lot of uh Queen Salote's um sure. songs and you know, and just get a guitar and ukulele going and try to figure something out and also try yeah. to take some of the Tongan song songs and put some orchestration into it. Yeah. yeah. I think you could take some Tongan song and put your big voice to it, man. I think that'll be great for you yeah. to do yeah that'd be great yeah. yeah so so um so you you live in new york now uh, that's your home now that's where yes uh i moved to new york in 1999 and i moved out here and let me just say that it wasn't easy to get started you know i'm sure in, i'm sure in, in this music business so for your listeners out there you know, you can't give up. You got to keep going. Like if you have a dream, you got to keep going. Like for me, it took it took about three, four years before things right. started to happen. But it happened very slow. And I didn't get into Juilliard until 2008. And wow. so, but, you know, luckily I met Dame Kiri Takanawa who took yeah. me to Juilliard. And, you know, I sang for them and they were like, okay. You know, so, you know, for me, it's like, and for your listeners, set your goals high and yeah. set your dreams and, and um, know what you want and sure. go for it. And don't let anyone tell you that it's not right or it's not, you know, it's wrong because that's for them. That's not right, right. and wrong. But for right. you, it could be right, you know, and yeah. just go for it. Yeah. And those people that are negative, that might be negative now, as you're climbing that ladder of success, they're gonna look up to you. And by the time you're up there, they're gonna say, oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you and yeah. stuff. And you know, you remember how they were, but just forgive yeah. them. But it's one of those things that you gotta keep going. And sure. you know, what I said, you know, when Weber State University gave me an honorary doctorate, I was and just going to ask that. Yeah. How, yeah. yeah. I was going to ask, you know, you gave the, uh, the keynote speaker yeah. and, uh, you know, I listened to your speech, man. I was, I was moved by your speech, man. It's, that was a great speech. And, um, what happened, what, what did they invite the, you got a call invited you to, uh, to come out and speak. Yeah. So the month of February, I got a phone <laughs> call from the president of Weber state university and he said that he and uh, the board 
had a meeting and um, my name came up and everybody said, oh yeah, I mean, we should definitely yeah. get him. And so, so he asked if I was willing to accept a honorary doctorate. <laughs> you know how big and, of an honor is amazing. that? You know how big of an honor is that? That's really huge because really, I mean, your university has asked you to do this and that in, in my book is a big honor. And, and yeah. hats off to you for for getting chosen to give that speech because you did you did you did good, man. I tell you that you did really good. But uh it's you know it's it's a great honor for you, man, and, and we're so happy. I mean, I was, you know, when I saw it, it's like, man, this is awesome, you know. Uh yeah. speech and uh that's awesome, man. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. But how did you feel standing up there, man, talking? Did you, you have know, your family I, there? Did you have your family there? Yeah, well, because of COVID, it was limited and it was virtual. And so the graduates weren't there, but there was a band. And, you know, I think they allowed maybe 300 people into this into the stadium, which sure. sat about 16,000. Oh, wow. But there was okay. only 300 people there. And so um, I stood up there. I was proud to be Tonga. Sure. I was proud to be Polynesian. And I was proud to be a Papua, you know? Of course. You, you know, represent so, the name, man. To represent the name. And yeah. so, and because Tim, that's what our, you know, our um, family, parents, and ancestors, parents. Yes. They, they moved to America for a better life. Sure. You know, they sure. moved to America for us, for their dreams, you know, to come true. And we are the dreams. And sure. so for me to stand up there, I was over the moon. But yeah, at the same time, at the same time, I felt like I was in a dream. You know, well, you yeah, you carried on the name and, you know, and, uh, you know, just too bad your parents wasn't, you know, not around to see that. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, when you were standing up there, I was thinking about your parents, you know, yeah. um, you know, just, just, you know, that's a kid's dream to have their parents around mm -hmm. when something, something big like that happens, you know, exactly. I mean? you want exactly. them around to see it, the fruit of what they have brought you out here to do, Amen. That, you know, it came, it came, it came to it. So, yeah. yeah. And, uh, awesome, man. It's, um, you know, we, should be proud of yourself of what you have done. How about your siblings? Are your siblings are you? You're the youngest in what? Seven kids? Nine, nine, nine kids. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're, all your siblings? All your siblings yeah, my, are living? Yeah, okay. my siblings. My siblings were also over the moon. I mean, <laughs> I th I think the whole family was just over the moon. Of course, because you know, it's one of those honors that it's only given to a few people, yes. and you know, and so right. for me. Uh, a friend of mine said um, he has two doctors in Utah, and he says, "You know, your your honorary doctor is is means more than, <laughs> more. than mine." And I said, "How can it be?" I said, right. "You are your doctor times two. And he goes, "Yeah, yeah, but your honor." He says, um, "I had to pay money to get my doctorate. You know, right. I had to pay money. I had to go to class. I had to go to school, yeah. and blah blah blah." He goes, "Yours is you were." chosen from yeah. all these people and you were chosen to to get to have this honorary doctorate but also be the commencement speaker which wow. was amazing but that's what you know i'm just trying to tell the people how how big is that how big of of of, of what you did uh you know the honor they gave you is huge like he said he paid for his doctor but they your yours was celebrated you know through you know, yeah. through all my work that I've done outside. All your work, yes, yes. Yeah. I, and, uh, I think that was just a gift that was given to you that for all the hard work that you have done and they have recognized it. Yeah. You know, the university has recognized of the hard work that you have put in and they wanted to, to make it clear to everybody the, how proud of the school that you went to of you, so yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I I'm just very very happy and very honored by it. Yeah. You know, to 
to be able to put um, Tonga on the map. You yes. Know, exactly. Again, and so for me, I am very, very honored by that. And so, yeah. man, that's, I mean, that's, you know, you're the first opera singer from, from, from are you the first Tongan opera singer, right? I like to say so, yes. <laughs> yes. And then you're the first uh, commencement speaker for a big university here in yeah. the United States. And I think I'm the third, um, what I've been told, I'm, I'm the third uh, Tongan that's ever gotten an honorary doctor. The first one was King, and the second one was some other guy. I can't remember uh -huh. his name. And then me. So right. it's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dude, you're, uh, you come a long way and then you pursued what you wanted to do, uh, you know, after playing football. And um, we wanted to get you on here to tell your story. And we wanted people to know who you are, uh, to tell your story to you know, our listeners. Um, you know, we, we have a big listeners. I mean, um, and, um, we're so happy that we got you to uh, come on on here and, and tell your story because, you know, we, we wanted to do it earlier, but it didn't work out. And uh, I finally got you to <laughs> finally we got, got you to come on here and tell your story, which is it's amazing. Uh, it's a story that and, you know, and, and, and our Tongan people should be proud of of uh, who you are and, and, and should be. Thank you. Because I'm proud to be Tonga. Yeah. Yes, that's it. And that's what we do things here. And we say Tonga because we are proud of where we come from. I'm very you know? proud, yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that uh, you got to come on here. Anything you want to uh, leave our uh, audience with before we close down here? <clears throat> um, I would just probably just say um, for, you know, for your listeners to, um, again, to dream big. Uh, and also, you know, remember that we are, you know, we are people from the islands and that, you know, a lot of people, and we don't know this, but some might know that a lot of people here in America look up to us. And so everything that we do that is good, they look up to. So I would say to emphasize more on the good part of our Tongan because it, it seems like if some Tongan person did something bad, it's always like, oh, it's a Tongan, you know? Right. <laughs> for us, for, for me, it's like, let us go out there and do good and let us support each other in no matter what one does in their, in, in their life. Like if, if, a, if a family has a person that wants to be a ballet dancer, support that person. Sure. You know, sure. a boy or girl, support. Why does our, why does our, the, the Tongan people, the Polynesian people, why do we have to only emphasize so much on sports? sports. You know, when our people are so gifted in yeah. everything from dance to singing, to sports, to a right. lot of things but to support one another. And when we support one another, we become a strong, a stronger um, nation. Yeah. Well, you know, um, like, you, like you say, you're first generation coming here to America, so am I. And, um, and most of us uh, has, you know, has maybe already have two or three generation here already here in America. And, uh, We've been making a big dent in the uh, in the sports field with playing football. There's a lot of kids uh, has already made it to the professional level, and um, a lot, yeah, a lot of kids uh, since we played, and yeah. uh, and uh, and they're making more money. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're making a lot more, more. Money. <laughs> a lot more what we made. So a lot more, but, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, like you said. Uh, uh, if uh, if you uh, are good at something, uh, even singing, uh, pursue it, pursue it, and and do the things that the, the right things, and to get there uh, with with what you feel like you can do. But uh, Tao, I'm 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 so blessed, and and uh, I'm I'm happy to see you tonight. I haven't seen you for a while, and uh, hopefully that we can stay in contact and. Uh, and whenever you have that first uh, record, I, I want to buy it. I want to buy that first one. Okay. So, thank good. you, man. Thank
Thank you for coming Thank you so on. Thank you for having me and um, God bless and blessings to all your listeners. Thank you, my man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, Bye. my man. Yeah. All right.